You're watching the Wine and Cheese Music Session only on RadioFreeNY.com. Hi, I'm Carl Dixon, singer guitarist in my band Coney Hatch. Glad you took the elevator up to the RFNY Penthouse Suite. I'll be sipping some April wine, slicing some cheese, and playing some tunes. Can you recall any favorite interviews you've done on American radio? Gee, uh, there were so many. Um, I rem well, there's a guy that I still have a relationship with to this day named Carl Russo in Buffalo at 97 Rock. He's been there since 1981, and uh, so he was there interviewing us. Because we're so close to Buffalo, that w for the border crossing point, we'd end up doing shows in that region, and we'd be on every so often doing interviews with him, and he'd support the new records. And he's still at that same station after all these years, so I just saw him in the autumn, this past autumn, and uh, that was nice. They didn't change the format of that station? Uh, well, they're more classic rock okay. now, oriented. Uh, you know, they kind of, I think they kind of stop where we, at this, around the time we stopped, 85. Uh, nothing more recent than that, as most of the stations do. But um, we had some nice moments on the air with him, I recall, where uh, he had me cho playing DJ, almost choosing some of my favorite songs, and and on some late nights, just hanging around the studio, the station, after a show moments. And there was another night, nice one uh, with my um, my guy, my guys in the band, where we went on in uh, Seattle. I seem to recall to talk uh, about our first album because we were out with Judas Priest at that time. Was it KISW? Maybe I remember those. Other yeah, I think so. Yeah, the the. Uh, Oh, and then there was WMMS in Cleveland. Yeah. That was a big one for us. They, they Were you on the air with KBO? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I know we, we did the morning coffee break show. Okay. Our first show ever in the United States was the morning coffee break it from the happen. Agora. Okay. And then we, yeah, we were on the yeah. air talking to somebody. Uh, but, I, man, I can't remember the, the details but at this that point. that was a primary station. I know whenever I try to get a record on MMS, that was hitting payday. Yeah. Uh, now, what seems to be, over the years, one of the more popular questions people ask you? Um, <laughs> popular questions. I think, uh, <laughs> whatever happened to Coney Hatch? <laughs> That's, that one seems to come up a lot. <laughs> well, the good news, uh, as attested by what we're doing today, is that they are out there, I mean, new record. From, yes, you know, we've got uh, the new album that uh, came out in September of 2013. It's our fourth record. We took we took a little hiatus of 28 years between records. You know, we we'll, we probably won't wait that long for for the fifth one, but you never know. Is there something you could tell us that perhaps not many of your fans know about you or the band? Um. Hmm. I don't know. An enormous amount of my life, at least, is on the public record. I, my life is an open book, pretty much. About the band, mm, I think that uh, we're one of the rare bands that came out of that time all still friends and liking each other. And we, especially my old uh, competitor, Andy Curran, in the band, we're better friends than ever now, after all these years. We have a different attitude about we, we, we celebrate our differences rather than fighting over our differences the way we used to. Well, that's, I guess, part of the maturing process. That is so, definitely part right? of wisdom and maturing. Right. Now, do you have a hidden talent? <laughs> <laughs> you have that you just don't know about. That um, needs to be revealed now. Uh, well, aside from being an intensely great lover, uh, I am also, uh, and, you know, only very few people know about that. Well, um, what makes you say that? Is that just, just your own assumption or what? what well, it's not an assumption. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, based on the evidence, uh, based on the reports. Um, <laughs> it's a small sampling size, but, you know, I, I, it's believable. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, it, it, well, I'm really 
excellent at starting a fire and splitting the firewood in my I, have a, I live in kind of a forest and so uh, yes I, I and I'm a great gardener like what's one of the better flowers or plants oh well I, I, I manage my my fruit uh, crops in the yard I have an apple tree and a pear tree and a grape vines and I have strawberries blueberries blackberries and Raspberries growing and in, in my yard. Absolutely. Oh, and radio free, maybe. Radio free. There's no radio going on in that fruit yeah, orchard. Right. We don't want radioactivity. No. For your songs. Now, have you ever sung the, sung the national, uh, the Canadian national anthem at a major sporting event, or the solo or the band? Um. No. Um, let's see. Did I? I don't think so. I, I did it a couple of times at our charity hockey games in my full hockey outfit and skates. I uh, just took the helmet off uh, and sang the national anthem. Um, but not NHL size or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now you did tell me, I think on the phone recently, that you were, or maybe currently, a radio DJ? I spent seven years doing a, a Carl Dixon's Rock Garden was my show. And uh, that was every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock for many years. It, I, it had a brief interim, well, significant interruption when I had my car crash, so I had a few months away from it then, six or seven months. Um, but it was uh, really enjoyable and it really was a show about my favorite rock era music. It wasn't all strictly guitar-driven rock, but uh, I have a huge collection of music built up over the years and so I would just draw on my favorites and spin that for the, the listeners. And as well, you have been Doing some acting? Is this uh, on stage or a commercial? Or uh, on stage for uh, a play that uh, ran for a couple of weeks. Uh, I hadn't done any acting before that. Uh, since then, I've been doing some uh, vo a lot of voiceover work, which requires a certain amount of acting. And uh, more, the acting realm these days is so far auditioning um, and hoping <laughs> for the callback. Is there a tagline from a commercial you could recite right now for us? Oh. Voice you've done? Help is close to home. Uh, for a hardware store called Home Hardware. Right. Now, have you also written jingles for any TV commercials? Uh, they had me sing There's No Place Like Home for the Holidays um, for a commercial, which, you know, the Perry Como song that everybody knows and loves. So I did my... I guess they didn't want to pay for the Perry Como originals, so they got me to sing it. <laughs>
John's troublemaking road manager. They found him a job at Polygram Records, so he became the southern rep out of out of Texas, and he uh, he took good care of us on our on our third tour for Friction. That was that was really nice uh, having some party time with him. And we had this other fellow out of Buffalo, an indi uh, independent promo guy named Jim Sote. Jim was. Uh, he claimed he had glaucoma, which was the reason for his uh, dedicated dope smoking. <laughs> we had one trip down the highway with uh, clouds of dope smoke streaming out of the windows, I'm sure, from Jim. But he was able to get your records away. He had the ability, and he was a believer in the band. That was one of the reasons that uh, we got off to a good start, was that somebody at the label was a believer. Right, right, that's for sure. Uh, can you do that song by the monkeys, I'm a believer? <laughs> <laughs> um. Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Without a trace Of doubt in my mind I'm in love Ooh, I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried I thought love existed only in fairy tales or some damn thing. Right, right, right. Now I read somewhere that some of your family are living in Australia. Any encounters with kangaroos while you were there? Uh, <laughs> uh, kangaroos are everywhere in Australia, so you can't really avoid them. Um, but they're not really tame. They're actually nasty little buggers. They'll, uh, they'll give you a kick or a bite if you get too close to them. And what's some of the best advice that you can give either your children uh, and or aspiring musicians? Learn to write a song. That's the part that uh, is most truly your expression, is your thoughts. If you can capture those in a song, that's the, the part that they can't take away from you. And in today's world, Carl, do you find that with the popularity of auto-tune and sampling and all the digital, digital tricks of the trade, that the order of music has suffered or improved greatly? Suffered. There is a, a real uh, lack of awareness of what it takes to get great at the skill of making music. And I think that's a reflection of the fact that very few people make their own music anymore. They rely on recordings of music to listen to, somebody else doing it for them. They, very few people want to put in the time or the trouble or the effort and the frustration that it takes to become really good at singing or playing or performing. Uh, I have a friend who plays with lots of different young acts and he expressed surprise recently that one of the young girl singers he was working with, wow, and she was really singing at the event. Most of them rely on tapes and lip syncing now. So that's really sad to me. That, that's, I think that's another reason why music doesn't feel as special or important anymore, because it's all machine driven. Uh, something I know you can relate to, as well as us at Radio Free, because it's kind of one of our mottos, is um, change is good, which leads us to an event in Australia that actually forever changed your life. What what actually took place and uh, how did that all go down with this crazy uh, <sighs> accident you had? Uh, I was in Australia to visit uh, my, my daughter and my ex-wife. Uh, my daughter was starring in a television series called The Saddle Club there. And uh, an unfortunate lapse of attention, I'd driven quite successfully many miles in Australia prior to that event, an unfortunate lapse of attention uh, led me to forget that they drive on the other side of the road there. Yeah. I was on a dark country road at night, uh, a highway, but there were no lights and no indications and no other traffic at all. And you were going at highway speed, I imagine. 60 true. miles an hour and I met the, uh, another fellow who was driving on the proper Australian side of the road, right. also at 60 miles an hour. Right. He was in a much bigger vehicle than mine and... He survived? Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. He, his car, his, his SUV went, went over top of me and kept going. Right. Uh, 
he had some injuries too. But yeah, I was pretty well crushed and torn apart. We paramedics probably thought that it was lights out. And no I was, yes, I, the police who came to see me later, who were at the scene, told me that the, uh, the emergency units, as they were loading me into the helicopter, shook their head and said, no hope for this guy. Wow. And so how the heck, despite those severe injuries, were you able to recover? How long did it take? And how do you have the strength mentally and physically to get to the fit person you are today? Hmm. Uh, well, angels watching over me or something. That's, uh, there was, uh, I don't remember anything about the actual incident because uh, I, it happened so fast. I guess I post-trauma amnesia. I don't remember being semi-conscious in the car afterward, even though apparently I was babbling and trying to move and they were holding me still. Um, the recovery part of it, it's, it's just in me, I guess, that I learned to to drive myself forward no matter what obstacle lay before me throughout my life, which is kind of what you need to sustain any kind of a music career, because any career in the arts is filled with peaks and valleys. Nobody, very few, get to be just a star and stay a star and stay wealthy and prosperous forever. There are pitfalls and then you get to climb again if you try hard. So. That was uh, the lesson to me that I, I had struggles before it was, and I dealt with them. So it was, this was just in the category of perhaps the most severe struggle yet. But I knew how to pull myself together and face a, face a challenge. So um, a quote I lived by at that time was something, I, I'm not sure who originally said it, but it went, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals character. And I determined that I was going to reveal the best character of myself that I had in me in the process. And uh, I remember the doctors, I was f five months. They wanted me to stay longer, but I wanted to come home in Australian hospital. And uh, the doctors there said I was the most motivated patient they'd ever seen. And to me, that was quite a surprise. I thought, why wouldn't everybody do it like this? Who, want, who the hell wants to stay in a hospital any, a day longer than you have to? You know, the problem with hospitals is they're full of sick people. <laughs> it's, who wants to be there? So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, but some people take that easy way out where they sooner say, you know what, I'm just giving up. It's not worth it where you went the distance and... Well, I'm... Yes, I wasn't prepared to lie down and quit. That's just... As I have liked to say ever since then, there's no quit in this boy. And from these experiences, um, you have now gone from rock tours to speaking tours as you share your life experiences to corporations and individuals, I guess, going on the speaking circuit. Um, how do you like it compared to the concert scene? Speaking is a completely different kind of performance. Hi. I, I mean, any performance, if you if you're geared in that direction, it is a high. I look forward to every performance. I start to get glum if I have too long a time between uh, performances. Um, but speaking is so different from music because even with my solo acoustic shows as a singer and player, people have often said to me, it must take a lot of guts to get up there just by yourself with a guitar and sing. To me, it, it's, uh, it's still a barrier, that medium that you interpret between yourself and the audience where there's this guitar in front of me and I'm singing these thoughts, these, these words, these melodies that uh, are sometimes mine, sometimes other people's, but it's one step removed from me, Carl, the person, speaking. And when you're speaking your own thoughts and your own story, and there's no instrument between you, and you're just doing your thing, you're telling with your own voice, that is as naked as you can get. Then if they don't like it, they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> so that is actually the challenge that I've had to learn to um, to navigate and enjoy. It's it's quite a thrill, and I have found, for whatever reason, the way I present the story is always a standing ovation at the end. So imagine that much of a high when you're just standing there talking. 
Carl, tell me, what sort of interesting people have you met along the way while speaking, and their reaction from hearing you speak? And can you give us a little taste of your inspirational, motivational speaking? Mm. And maybe even including some songs that you might incorporate in your speaking days. Well, I've met some incredibly uh, interesting and inspiring people from uh, all over the world at these different events. I don't go all over the world, but these people come from all over the world to these different events. And it's quite amazing to, to see the universality of the message of setback and hope and recovery and what that, how that translates to everybody, no matter where they're from. And so, yeah, people from Saudi Arabia and from Indonesia and the Philippines and all over the States and Canada and, and Europe and, and South America. It's, it's been quite, quite, a, quite an interesting experience to find myself reaching out to all these people and they receive the messages and like them. So um, I, would, I would think that they're, everybody's seeking some new way of looking at the life is difficult you know sooner or later everybody hits a tough patch so it, it's great to have some ideas that we hear from other sources of how to cope with those difficult times or to be inspired by someone else's example or learn from somebody else's example not to do that stupid thing <laughs> look how it turned out for them so uh, I'm one of my messages is pay attention to your surroundings because uh, that's what I ended up in great difficulty from was a lapse of attention due to emotional stress for a, just less than a minute. Um, one of the songs that uh, I mix into the presentation, I do about two or three, maybe four songs sometimes, is something I wrote that was kind of the lesson I, when I was making my last album, Lucky Dog. People always used to say to me, you must have learned a whole, so many things out of this, these crazy experiences. So I wrote this song kind of as a way of summing it up. It's called uh, The Point of This Life. There must be a guardian angel watching over me. Because the universe sure smacked me down. And it could have ended badly I lay there, bemused and bewildered From the shock of the fall Which turned to amazement As good people rallied to my distress call All we are in this world Is what we are to each other And love is the reason we help one another the point of this life is to get along To make this world better before your time is gone Look at all you still have and not what you've lost The point of this life is to get along Give it all you've got Give it all you've got I'm going to play a couple of songs here these are slated for my ne next album that's coming out sometime, well, optimistically, this year. <laughs> Albums seem to take such a long time to make these days. This is a song uh, that is about people, a couple who's stuck together forever, no matter what, and just dealt with everything that life threw at them. It's called Part of a Set. Saturday morning, we went out for a drive down the old county road. You could still see your breath, and the autumn sun was shining on the trees, all scarlet and gold. Where you come to bend, there's that century farmhouse, the sign said items for sale. We pulled in, and the gentleman who lives there stood waiting tall but a little stooped and frail 
There were blue glass figurines of something or other And they sparkled and caught my wife's eye She said, I only want the one Can I make you an offer? And the gentleman softly replied They're part of a set You can't break them up They're meant to go together like a saucer and cup They can't be divided for it just ain't the same Like Laurel and Hardy Or fun and games They're part of a set You can't break them up There were boxes and tables And farm tools A collection built up through the years Boots and calendars, mirrors and mason jars, Peggy Lee records and garden shears. I saw old tires from a tractor. Do you still have that tractor? He said, No, but all those tires need a home. Call me sentimental, but that tractor tilled my land, and one tire is no good alone. They're part of a set, you can't break them up. They're meant to go together and hold each other up They can't be divided or it just ain't the same Like flowers in springtime, like you and your name They're part of a set, you can't break them up Took a good look around the homestead And the old boy's treasures in the yard He saw me and spoke Yes, I live here alone now My sweetie's in heaven And some days are hard He said, I never knew that love was such a beautiful thing Until that girl agreed to be my wife Whatever came along We always stuck together when it's time to tell the story of my life I'll say I was part of a set You can't break them up They're meant to go together like a saucer and cup You can't be divided Or it just ain't the same Like Laurel and Hardy A fun and games Part of a set You can't break them up they're meant to go together and hold each other up They can't be divided, or it just ain't the same Like flowers in springtime, like you and your name They're part of a set, you can't break them up Yeah, they're part of a set, you can't break them up Well, that was one song, <clears throat> and the next song is really new, really fresh. The other one, that last one was about a year old. And this next song is, ooh, a couple of months old, I guess. And it's about new love and convincing somebody who's reluctant to uh, let down their guard and let you in. How do I explain this? It's all pretty fresh But the moment I heard your voice You took me to the threshold Of a land of beauty Of colors and stars And it'll be my privilege to think about you No matter where you are Could I love you? Would that be alright? Can I use
can hold back or run away and hide. It takes a special kind of crazy to step out boldly and decide that you'll open your heart again, put it all on the line. Cause you know that whatever comes along now, baby, we are gonna be fine, just fine. Uh, <laughs> your fans will be happy to know that you are performing solo in such places as a Florida Hard Rock Cafe and with Coney Hatch, I know in England, later on in the year. But uh, we're so looking forward to seeing lots more great things from you. You're a real blessing to all of us. Thank you. What a lovely thing to say. It's uh, been a really nice experience being part of your wine and cheese party here. Well, thanks again. Breathe us in and we'll blow you away. RadioFreeNY.com, a breath of fresh air. <laughs>